Greetings, Timothy Halloran here. The date is Tuesday, April 16th, 2019. Myself, I am a man, a human being born out of the earth, a part of the natural cycles, the seasons, the phases of the earth, whether or not we want to be a part of the earth and these natural seasons and cycles at this time. So I do have some goodies, some announcements that I will save to the end of the video. I am doing another raffle giveaway. We have an amazing astrological course coming up for those who would like to learn the real gist to birth chart interpretation. But first, I have assumed the role, the responsibility of playing a little bit of the message delivery mailman for you all today. Uh, when we are in the midst of important times and I have important messages to deliver, I tend to be more aware of my human limitations and inadequacies. So please bear with me. We are in the midst of an incredibly real, powerful, transformational period. And the reality that can be setting in for all of us can be a potential rude awakening, or it can be a reckoning. We are in a period of reckoning. This is a period in which we are seeing what we have been truly investing in and how those investments are now paying off. And of course, in the United States, we're in the middle of tax time, but I'm not simply speaking about physical or apparent investments or monetary investments. We're talking about every dimension of life. Where have we put our resources, our time, our energy into? This is a period where we can be seeing the results of our labors or the lack of results from our own labors. Now, this is a time period where we need to be aware that there are going to be many souls going through difficult experiences throughout this reckoning period. And we must bear in mind these videos go out to tens of thousands of individual souls. Not everybody has the same unique experience. There are going to be many interpretations to the collective energy that we will all experience in different ways. My job, my livelihood, it comes from giving individual transit and birth chart readings to individual souls. You can go to my website to receive that information. For those of you who may be experiencing, you know what, I feel great and I'm not experiencing challenges. Wonderful. <laughs> I'm happy for you. Bear with me because this is a time period where there is a huge change taking place. People can be feeling a sense of release or upliftment, a changing of the guard, and other people may be feeling a sense of no ground to stand on or feeling much, much more pushed up against the wall or backed into a corner. If you are feeling more uplifted, more inspired, more energized, this is a wonderful time for you to recognize what you have accomplished and also to recognize the difficulty of this transformation as it is affecting many souls out there in the world. And if you're finding yourself particularly afloat, this may be a wonderful opportunity for you to reach out and extend some of your own resources, space, or time to others who may be going through more of a challenging phase right now. Now the main astrological factor signature that is contributing to this global overhaul, a transition of paradigms, a complete restructuring of our own foundation in our own life as we've been talking about, as we will be talking about. This is the Saturn-Pluto conjunction in the later degrees of Capricorn. This is a particularly powerful conjunction on their own south nodes, the south node of Saturn and Pluto. And through the rest of this month, the transiting moon south node is also joined Saturn and Pluto. But wait, Pluto is going to station retrograde towards the end of the month, April 24th, soon followed by Saturn stationing retrograde, April 29th, and then the moon south node can join Saturn, April 30th. This is an incredibly powerful time that is forcing us to look at 
karma, which simply means actions and consequences, the worldly nature that we've been born into, human history as it has been long outstanding for thousands of years, our given culture, the conditions we've received from our culture and authorities, it's all going through a tremendous upheaval. Because there are things that are not working that needs to be let go. And that letting go transition is initiated by seeing how these old patterns, old dynamics are no longer working. The way I've phrased this before is it's almost like the ugly face of patriarchy is rearing its ugly head for us to see everything that's ever been wrong in order for us to make adjustments, in order for us to make changes. Can there therefore be an experience of fear? anxiety or apprehension that is being stirred up at this time? Yes. And is fear essentially a problem? Or is fear really a part of life, a part of an emotional response or feedback which is informing us? And as I said in the last video, it is very, very important for us to not simply sweep these fears under the rug, but to tune into them. Because tuning into these fears will be allowing us to see what must be changed, make these adjustments, and bring ourselves into a new vessel, a new container that can preserve and honor our own well-being in a way that older containers or older traditions could not have done previously in the past. Now, the sun has just left a third quarter square with that Saturn-Pluto this last couple weeks. That brought up a tremendous amount of upheaval, which was also bringing up the dynamic of, well, what do we choose to align with? What do we choose to believe in? This can be a crisis of consciousness or a crisis of belief type of period. In the last few weeks, we had Jupiter station retrograde. In the next week, we're going to have Mercury coming out of his shadow phase and soon forming a conjunction with Chiron in the early degrees of Aries. Now, if we can even remember all the way back to the beginning of March, this is when Mercury originally stationed retrograde at the final degree of Pisces, then retrograded all the way back to mid-Pisces and stationed direct conjoined Neptune. And a part of this Mercury retrograde ongoing the last month and a half is there has been so much going on. So many changes, so many people, so many dimensions that are involved, we've had to process so much. Layer after layer of the onion coming off. And Mercury is what? Our rational, conceptual faculty, which actually sees and has a comprehensive understanding of our surrounding environment and world. When Mercury retrograde happens, it's usually a signature that there needs to be digestion. There needs to be processing, potentially the elimination of mental baggage to really figure out what are we working on, what are we dealing with, what can we do. Now that Mercury stationed on Neptune mid-March had this theme of, well, there's so much that's involved and it's so complicated that we simply cannot know everything. There has been this theme of surrendering to forces that are greater than us or surrendering to dimensions which we are not totally aware of, surrendering to that which we may not have seen or may not have understood. There may have been other dimensions. There may have been other activities or other people involved that we simply were not aware of. And now, through these next few days, tomorrow the 17th, Mercury returns to the final degree of Pisces and is now leaving the shadow phase of his recent retrograde. Indeed, many astrologers, including myself, would say that this recent Mercury retrograde is just completing tomorrow. And then on the 18th, Mercury moves into Aries. And then coming up on Friday the 19th, Mercury forms that conjunction to Chiron. At the beginning of March, Mercury came up to Chiron and then stationed retrograde just before completing that cycle. 
Now Mercury's coming back and finally completing this cycle. What this can indicate is now there can be a greater understanding of Chiron, our own healing journey, our own path of healing, our own path of understanding our healing journey. What are we healing coming from the past? Where is that healing taking us through life? What are the healing tools, the healing skills, or the healing teachings that can allow us to understand and embrace the gifts coming from this healing path in our life? Now, while we're dealing with this Pisces-Neptune theme of surrendering to forces that are outside of our own awareness, and again, we think of that Saturn, Pluto, and Capricorn, and that word karma, past life decisions, the world as it's been for thousands of years comes up. And karma is a word that I actually don't like. I don't like how it's used. It is one of the least therapeutic words. It sends a message of fear, of consequence. It's this misunderstanding that life is a series of punishments or gifts, much like Santa Claus distributing these things to good or bad children. No, it's a very, very oversimplified view of karma. And we must not simply think I'm dealing with challenges and so this is my punishment, this is what I deserve, or this is the consequences to past actions. No, we are coming from days and ages that have not been all perfect. And we've all been doing the best that we could at the time. And the world and humanity has not been an ideal hunky-dory situation for as far back as we can remember. And so when we're dealing with these collective actions and consequences, what humanity has been doing for hundreds of years, for example, we can look at the current global environmental crisis where there is all of this technology which has been built, which is now destroying nature's very fundamental fabric, the foundation of all life. But it's not as if human beings set course for their own self-destruction. When they were inventing technology to try and improve our own life or to improve the pain and the suffering of other people's lives. And yet it has generated consequences. We have to make adjustments. We have to turn the wheel so we don't drive straight into a brick wall. So this is a part of life. This is not simply, oh, I'm getting rewarded, oh, I'm getting punished. No, this is a time of learning and redirection. Okay, I wrote to my Patreon community this last week using the symbol of the Wheel of Fortune from the Tarot. A turning of the wheel, a turning of the season. When we think about that Wheel of Fortune archetype, there are seasons that are going down, there are seasons that are going up. But is that a loser and is, and is that a winner or is that simply a turning of the seasons of nature? This cycle upon cycle upon cycle, it's a part of our learning, it's a part of our growth. We go up, we go down. And we learn from the going down as much as the going up. It is all beautiful. It is all necessary for our soul's evolution. And sometimes our soul itself sets us up for circumstances or situations that do not seem totally fair or easy or hunky-dory. For example, here's a redundant experience that I've dealt with a hundred times throughout my life. And it keeps coming up. And I felt like I've been dealt this shitty card or drew the short straw in this particular area, this particular dynamic throughout my life. And astrology can reveal these dynamics and not only that, explain not simply the what but the why these dynamics are repeating. And sometimes instead of it simply being an oversimplified karmic, oh you're being punished because you slapped someone in the face ten lifetimes ago, these dynamics can come from our own soul's evolutionary intentions. What our soul seeks to, to learn and grow through having particular or even redundant experiences. And so we must not carry these things on our own shoulders as a burden or as a punishment, but rather accept our given circumstances as the stage for soul developmental growth evolutionary expansion and learning that is the track that we're already on. It's already been set. 
This thing's been unwinding our whole lifetime. And now there is just a turning of the wheel. And when there is a turning of the wheel, we must make adjustments. When you take a turn on the highway, on the road, and you're turning 90 degrees, this is the archetype of the 90 degree square aspect in astrology. You start to turn the wheel, and then halfway through the turn, you have to adjust. Otherwise, you're going to end up going 180 degrees, going the wrong way. So it's this time of adjustment karmically on a deep soul level to embrace these deeper evolutionary lessons that may be coming through the challenges of circumstance and have buried beneath the surface the gem, the treasure of so much more productivity, so much more creativity, so much more fast-paced evolution that it can simply seem like hell. Hell is the word associated with Pluto and Scorpio. And hell, which I do associate with Pluto and Scorpio, does not equal the place where you're sent to to be punished. Hell equals transformation. Happening at such a fast and intense pace, it's uncomfortable for us. But it is actually in those places and those phases where we are learning, where we're growing, where we are evolving and coming into our greatest potential the most. But we don't recognize it because it's a bit of a hot and a tight place. But it all pays off a million, a billion, a trillion fold from what we are capable of recognizing while we are still in the thick of it. And so that's the message, if anyone, I would like to deliver to you today. We are in the thick of it, and I haven't even begun to talk about this week's transits. We're talking about 2019 into 2020. And this is just a period in this year of 2019 where these underlying dynamics can really be triggered, can be catalyzed, can be coming up to the surface like a volcanic eruption. And it is an opportunity for us to seize the wheel and make it turn into what it is that we want to be driving towards. So now that I've been talking for Lord knows how long, probably 10 or 15 minutes, let's bring it all back. Today is Tuesday, April 16th, 2019, and coming up early morning on the east coast of the United States, Friday the 19th, a full moon in Libra, the final degree of Libra, 29 degrees, a critical degree. This is our second full moon in Libra in a row, so I don't know, maybe you want to correlate this to the twice in a month full moon equals a blue moon, two full moons in the same sign, Libra relationship stuff. We've also got Venus pulling up to the final degrees of Pisces. And on the day of this full moon, that full moon is at a 150 degree quincunx aspect. There is a theme here with that Venus, final degrees of Pisces, full moon, final degrees of Libra. The sun moves into Venus's sign of Taurus on April 20th. Venus leaves Pisces, enters Aries on the 20th. And not only that, Juno, the partnership asteroid with many similar characteristics to Venus, pulls out a Gemini into Cancer the same day, the 20th. And on the 20th, Venus squares asteroid Juno, the partnership asteroid. My goodness. <laughs> and then Venus conjoins Chiron on April 23rd. <laughs> I mean, this is... So much Venus, so much Libra, so much relationship reflection. And are we dealing with the stereotypical love and light Libra reflection? Maybe not stereotypically right now. A part of that full moon in a quincunx to Venus can be the challenge or the seeming disagreement between our ideals in terms of how we'd like to live our life and how we would like to relate and connect with others versus how those relationships actually are, how we actually are connecting to other people and the environments, the dynamics we find ourselves within. Libra wants balance, wants harmony, wants equality, wants justice. 
Venus at the final degrees of Pisces wants us to be completed, wants it to be together, but that quincunx aspect says, yes, but there's going to be some adjustment here. And that's a full phase quincunx. There may even be some conflict here. There may even be some reflections coming back from other people that are not exactly what we want to hear, not exactly what we want to see, and it does not seem totally perfect or altogether. Now, on the other hand, again, some people go up, some people go down. This can be a period where we are adjusting how we're relating in our relationships in a very masterful way. Things can be coming together for us. Things can be smoothing out for us. But hello, we've got Venus in a squared asteroid Juno. The day that Venus and Juno change signs around the same time as this full moon, I mean, we just have to anticipate there being some creative tension here. And tension always invites creativity. Oh, things are not exactly parallel. Things are not exactly balanced. The teeter-totter goes back and forth and back and forth. There is a creative tension. We can harness that energy. We can harness that dynamic tension to create changes. How are we connecting and sharing with other people? That Venus Juno square in and of itself can create the tension between our relationships and our own sense of loving relationship connection. Juno moving into Cancer wants emotional safety. I feel safe in my home. We feel safe together. I can talk and communicate and be received and be heard and be understood. We can be open. We can be honest. We can be on the same dimension and feel together and feel protected and feel warm and content and relaxed. And Venus going into Aries says, yes, but I also want to be free and I want to be independent. And I want to go to the beat of my own drum, and I have my own artistic gifts, and I have my own value systems, and I have my own desires. And you know what? They're not totally in agreement with my partner at the moment, or with my surrounding environment, or simply with the temporary dynamics coming up in my partnership or my surrounding environment. It's a creative tension. What we do know is things got to change. Trying to do things the old beaten path will only result in repetition, making things worse, or it's almost like burying ourselves underground as if that false sense of protection is going to save us from the rain and the weather as if that will improve our comfort or our life. It's going to be very, very uncomfortable underneath all of that sand, all of that dirt, not being able to breathe. So we have to resurface. I mean, when we're talking about this overall reckoning period, the archetype that comes to my mind is the judgment card from the tarot, where we see people rising from their dead and from their graves. And no, it's not a zombie apocalypse. It's a time of bringing new life into the body. The body in the grave is a symbol of what is dead, what is dying, what's old and over. And yet there is a call. Bring life back, new directions, new life, new relationships, new orientations can all be born if we are willing to receive and hear the call. And the call is like an alarm clock. It's ringing loudly. It can be sending these vibrations that can bring up the fear or the anxiety. It very may well feel like the end of the world, but it's not the end of the world. It's an end of an epoch or it's an end of an era. And my goodness, how could I forget? A few days after this full moon in Libra, the sun joins Uranus at the first degrees of Taurus on April 22nd. That is Earth Day. We might be calling it Earthquake Day this particular year. Yes, the tectonic plates are shifting. This is another signature indicating the excitement, but also the potential for reinventing ourself as well as our relationship to our surrounding environment and appropriately surrounding world. When we try to escape reality, it is like running away from our own shadow. Can we even escape reality? Or when we try, does reality only come back harsher, harder, and with greater increased force? We are now confronting and dealing with the dynamics that we cannot simply get away from. And I know that is not an easy pill to swallow. 
And it's not me being the deliverer of good news necessarily. And yet it is something we must learn to embrace. And this human life in this world is not always all light and love and fluffy. There are the challenging aspects as well. But when we try to escape the challenging aspects, the challenges get harder. We're not going to be able to escape reality this next month. Not with Pluto stationing retrograde, 23 degrees, 9 minutes on April 24th. And then immediately followed by Saturn stationing retrograde exactly on the moon's south node, the 29th and the 30th. Pluto stationing retrograde draws us into this, the black hole reality beneath the surface. It challenges us to look deeply at what is the purpose of life. What are these huge dynamics? What is going on beneath the surface? Pluto is our unconsciousness. There is an opportunity for us to make the unconscious dynamics conscious by going into the shadow, by doing our shadow work, by having the necessary confrontations, the necessary conversations. Have these conversations this next week. Mercury is conjoining Chiron Friday, April 19th. This is the completion of his month and a half retrograde beginning at the start of March. This is where healing conversations can take place simply bouncing ideas off of other people. They can give us feedback that might make us aware of those dynamics that were previously outside of our consciousness. This may be the time where we are discovering techniques or tools that can be very powerful, very healing, that may be as simple as simply getting a therapist or bringing a third party in to talk about these deeper, deeper issues. Or you know what, bring a therapist into your partnership, please. Bring it into your family. We have a tendency of cutting ourselves off from these things culturally or societally. We have this subconscious guilt or blame that we must have done something wrong in order to be bringing help in. No, now's the time to be open to be receiving this help to change the foundation, to change the circumstance. Do the alchemy. Make it something different because we can. This Saturn stationing retrograde right on the moon's south node at the very end of this month of April, this is a powerful signal of change. Pluto and Saturn stationing the same week. Saturn stationing retrograde is about the societal breakdown of the old beliefs, the old structures, the old traditions, the old foundations. Saturn retrograde gets a rebellious quality. And guess what? This Saturn and Pluto stationing retrograde is at the tail end of this conjunction. It's saying, you know what? We were about to bring in a new paradigm. We're about to bring in things, but you know what? There's more we got to look at. There's more we got to stir up. There's more we got to change around. There's, again, more going on beneath the surface that we can recognize. We're going to start seeing this more and more through the end of this month. And we need to also embrace that rebellious quality of Saturn retrograde. I'm willing to break the rules. I'm willing to do it differently without throwing the baby out with the bathwater as well. For example, maybe we have this experience of, you know, I'm dealing with a really challenging claustrophobic dynamic. I'm dealing with these mean assholes and their oppression and their persecution and it's all their fault and I'm going to rebel against them and I'm going to start throwing knives and dropping bombs and before long we've created World War III. Well that's not a new thing in human history to blame and drop bombs and create another war and does it have a tendency to really resolve or change the fabric of that old oppressive regime? No, it only inflates it. Similarly, we cannot simply drop bombs in our surrounding relationships, surrounding structures, our bosses and our authorities. There is a very delicate changing of the wheel. It can be an incredibly powerful time, but if we try to force a square peg through the round hole, it may blow up in our faces. So be careful not to be rebellious to the point of throwing the baby out with the bathwater or making your life more challenging than it needs to be. But when it comes to us Americans paying our taxes this month, 
and we're signing up for the years to come and what we're going to be able to do and who we're going to work through for. These are the things that we very, very much want to take with a grain of salt at this time with Saturn stationing retrograde on the moon's south node. All of these structures to do with physical security, to do with governments, to do with... Uh, fundamental structures <laughs> out there in the society and the world, uh, we can anticipate these things are only going to continue to change, necessarily so, as the Saturn retrograde on the moon's south node will be bringing up old dynamics in order to see them, in order to transform them into something different. If we seize the power of this Pluto-Saturn on the moon's south node, there is the capacity to recognize now within yourself that you have the power to do it. You are the authority. You are the world catalyst. Some of that high octave Pluto that we hardly ever hear spoken about in the world of astrology, unfortunately, that ruler of the underworld has the gift of inspiring other people simply by showing up as a powerful soul who is capable of demonstrating powerful acts that will touch, uplift, and inspire other people's hearts without even having a hidden agenda or an ulterior motive. We're showing up in our power. This is what it means to be a human being. We don't show up in a line waiting for nice gifts and ice cream cones to be served for us, waiting for the older generations to pave the roads for us. We show up to repave those roads that are expected to be cracking and falling apart by the time the prior generations are reaching retirement. And we don't show up and expect to wait in a line to receive everything from the world the way we do in our early adolescence. We recognize I'm a human being. I'm born with gifts and capabilities. I know how to use the natural resources coming from the surrounding earth, world, nature, and society, and we can make it all work together. Me and my individual self, my family, my relationships, in whatever way that family is being born, in whatever way that relationship is forming itself, is it likely to look like that traditional white picket fence Walt Disney family with the nice dog and the dog house and the children all holding hands? No, it may not look like this. And that not necessarily indicates the end of the world or the end of that love, or the end of that appreciation, or that sense of there being a home. The picture, the foundation, the structure is changing. The essence, the love, the home, the family is evolving into something deeper, something realer, something that can actually be brought together. So it's ourselves, it's our relationships, it is our family, it is our connection to society and the greater world. And we're looking at all of these facets all at once this amazing month of April 2019 to be able to understand how this turning of the wheel can allow for an involvement that works even better, more liberated, more free than anything that we ever previously imagined was possible. But we, we must be willing to do the work and we must be willing to face and confront our fears, to expand our awareness of what is possible, push on those limits of the unknown and introduce fundamental possibilities into our reality that can be opening the doorway to future paradigms, to future realities yet to come. And that is the light at the end of the tunnel. And that is the astrology, not just now, but the next decade, is things can really start to get moving. So let's go ahead and touch down at the bottom of the barrel right now, because from this point on, it's only up from here. If we are willing to get real, and if we are not simply uh, sweeping things under the rug, lying, hiding, or being dishonest. That is what is ending now, as it can no longer allow for even a practical functioning survival anymore at this point. All right, so the heavy stuff's out of the way. And you know what? We are surviving. We are survivors. We've survived throughout the darkest ages that human beings can possibly comprehend. We have each other. 
We have all of the resources we could ever need to recreate a garden of Eden paradise. So let's keep our chins up even while we're the ground crew doing the construction work from the foundation up at this time. Yes, we get our hands a little dirty when we're building the foundation, when we're getting into the dirt, but it can go up from here if we lay a sturdy enough foundation that can last the centuries, the ages, the generations to come. Couple quick announcements. Uh, I'm gonna do another raffle. The last raffle that I did is very successful. It was really a joy for me to give away readings to people who may otherwise not give them. And so I'm gonna be doing another raffle. Uh, through this next weekend, feel free to sign up. I'm gonna be giving away astrology readings, memberships into my community, as well as workshops. And so I wanna be giving these opportunities away to those who are interested. Also, for those who are interested in astrological chart interpretation, this next segment of the complete course for evolutionary astrology is probably the most dense, the most rich, really, really meaty material, we'll say the main course for any vegetarians out there. But sincerely, I'm not super into advertising or self-promotion, but I recognize the value in this course. We're going to be learning about the eight phases. Did you know that each planet forms a phasal relationship to every other planet in your chart? Did you know there are not just six, but nine fundamental aspects? We're talking about conjunctions, oppositions, squares, sextiles, semi-squares, semi-sextiles, sextiquadrates, quincunxes, their relationship to the phases, their relationship throughout the entire cycle. We're going to get into planetary pairs. We're going to get into aspect configurations. All of the above is covered in part three of the complete course for evolutionary astrology. Sign up at the link below. This is material that sincerely so many so-called or self-proclaimed astrologers don't even know this whole fundamental aspect of astrology and chart interpretation. So please, if you're into astrology or if you're doing astrology and you have yet to learn this material, uh, you may be interested, check it out. And also feel free to use the comment section below, perhaps to share some of your own personal experiences, as well as get that sense of support that the internet can be such a useful and powerful tool in bringing like minds and beautiful souls together. So thank you again so much for the opportunity to be here to share this information with beautiful like minds and brilliant souls like yourself.